Hello. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, uh, myself, I'm Judy. Uh, I work with the Sonic team at Microsoft. Hi, yeah. I'm Arvind. Okay, so today we'll talk uh, about uh, Sonic configuration by uh, GCU and GNMI. So, uh, so uh, the challenges we faced here. Yeah. Uh, so the challenges are, uh, uh, if, you, if you think about the Sonic incremental config, right? Uh, so there is no systematic way to do incremental config push currently. Uh, the main uh, blocking things for us is uh, how we, we need to know the Sonic internal. So uh, the dependencies between services, whether any fields are created early, uh, the order dependency, right? So how do you create? Uh, so for example, if you want to remove a, a port, we need to make sure the ACL is removed. So that dependency is there. The update should be valid. And there are, uh, we use a couple of uh, uh, the JSON files for con pushing like the ACL JSON, DCB JSON, things like that. Uh, the, the core challenges we have facing is here, and we should do this with minimal disruption. So that was the idea. And uh, GCU was the solution for that, and it's currently there in the Sonic uh, released uh, software. So the idea here is to give a CLI, which actually hides the Sonic internal, so the user can just use it. Uh, it works on the config DB JSON format currently, and uh, the input to this is a JSON patch. So JSON patch is a set of uh, uh, instructions which has the op, like it could be remove, add, or create, uh, and it can tell uh, to a level of the object, so what value you need to change, and things like that. So JSON patch is well known, it applies, and it works on config DB schema and Sonic Yang schema. It has an RFC there, it is uh, well known, it's formally defined, and uh, many of the uh, programming languages has tools for that. Uh, we use the Python approach, but there are a couple of other uh, languages supporting it too. Uh, so going forward, I think the GCU, the use case, the main one was to apply the patch. Uh, so we have a couple of other use cases also on that, uh, like checkpointing, to uh, basically to take a checkpoint of the config DB, what we are using currently, do a rollback. Another interesting feature which we give is the uh, dry run capability. So uh, the user could try uh, applying the patch onto the config DB without actually putting onto the DB. So that is just something like dry run feature, which is optional to the uh, CLA command. Yeah. So these are the uh, command line options for that. So uh, GCU has three options basically. It's uh, config uh, apply patch to apply the file. The file is a JSON patch. So it's a set of instructions in JSON patch format, which we need to generate. Uh, the next is a config checkpoint. Uh, so we save the, uh, the config DB that is currently running on the system onto a file, uh, basically with the name of checkpoint, whatever name we, the user specifies. And the third command is the config rollback. So we can roll back to the checkpoint which is stored any time. Uh, these are a couple of uh, test uh, scenarios uh, which we have co covered. Uh, so like add rack, remove rack for the control plane ACL. So I provided a link there. So a uh, couple of use cases which we uh, have validated. So this uh, slide generally gives a workflow of how uh, the GCU will be integrated into a controller or sort of tooling environment, right? So basically we have a JSON patch, which is available. Uh, so uh, it, it comes through the system. Uh, the system should have some sort of pretext to make sure the service are running fine. And we use the three uh, CLIs. Basically, first take the checkpoint. Uh, we check successful or not, uh, then uh, take the patch. And if the patch is good, we are good, uh, and we have a rollback mechanism. So all the three CLIs can be integrated into any of the uh, workflow mechanism uh, with a controller or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so now going deeper into each of the uh, each of the uh, commands. So uh, in the case of apply patch, uh, so what what happens is uh, so we take the log first. So the user gives the JSON patch. The JSON patch is generated by the user. Uh, so he gives it as an input to the command line. The first step he does is so, so uh, if you see the models like so we use the Yang model as a base uh, for everything for validating. Uh, there's a patch reorder and there's a config applier and the config DB finally in the, in the device. Uh, the first step is to get the current config. So we actually get the current config and try to simulate applying the JSON patch onto the config uh, to see whether, uh, uh, and to generate basically a simulated config file. We run the uh, Yang mal validation model on that uh, to see whether there's any Yang uh, model failures. So that's the first step in that. So if there's a failure, we bail out there ourselves. 
The next step there is to order the patch uh, because the patch will have multiple operations like remove, add, create, etc. Uh, so we need to make sure the way we apply the patch onto the config DB is in, in the proper sequence, uh, like so that we don't have conflicts. Uh, the same example, right? The ACL on a port, or we should make sure the ACL is removed before the port is removed. Yeah. So all the sequencing should be done. So that is done in the order patch. The order patch gives us a set of uh, JSON patches, separate patch files which will be again uh, in a loop we are applying onto the actual config DB. So this is the place where we apply onto the config DB. And here the tool itself takes care of restarting or uh, restarting any services or which is required. Like suppose if you change the syslog server IP address, so we need to change restart the syslog uh, service. So things like that is done here. This goes in a loop. And at the end we compare the simulated uh, config DB which we got it earlier and the config DB which is currently in the device to make sure things are okay. So that's the final step. So this is just a sequence of what happens when you do a CLI of apply patch. And uh, oh, coming to the checkpoint, checkpoint is rather uh, easier. What we do is that we just read the config DB from the device. We read it in, into the, into the uh, current config DB, it's available, and check for the validity of that particular uh, config DB using the Young model schema again. And the next part is to save it into a file. So whatever config DB is in the device, we just save it into a file. So that's checkpointing and with the name the user specified uh, in the command line. And how do you do a rollback? So rollback is basically uh, get the uh, checkpoint. So rollback also we give checkpoint name. So we get the file which we saved with a particular name from that file, uh, from the file system. And at the same time we read the current config, what is there in the config DB. Uh, and we generate a patch, again this is the JSON patch and use the apply patch mechanism. That is the same CLI which we use. So to roll back to the corresponding, uh, uh, the, the checkpoint, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's it. I think so uh, these were the three main uh, CLIs that are introduced as part of GCU feature. And uh, it's all based on the Sonic uh, config DB schema. Uh, the idea is to move into the Sonic Yang format also. Um, and we need to support multi-ASIC and uh, Couple of things which we need to do is the performance. Uh, so how do you order the uh, JSON patch, right? So currently we just get the first possible path. Uh, it's some sort of a uh, DFS mechanism where we actually get the first best path to reach the current uh, target config. So it's better to optimize the path to get the best uh, set of uh, JSON patches and to, to improve the logging and error handling. So yeah, these are a couple of uh, next steps for GCU. Yeah, I think I'll probably hand over to Arvind for the GNMA part. Sure. Um, so I'll talk about like uh, having a GNMI interface on Sonic. So currently, as all of us know, Sonic has multiple DBs. Each DB have their own schema for defining data. Um, so, but we don't have like a common GNMI interface to update all these DBs. Um, so the solution uh, that's being proposed is that we'll have one common GNMI server, uh, which talks to a GNMI client to handle set or get request. And in, in, inside this uh, GNMI service, uh, we will branch out based on where the target uh, DB is, what DB the uh, data operation needs to be done. Um, if it's config DB, then um, we could have a case where we want to update the complete config DB or it could be an incremental push. Um, so if it's an incremental push, then we leverage the GCU infrastructure which Judy talked about to update the incremental config change or we can go ahead and update the full config uh, <coughs> uh, DB. Um, there could be other use cases where we want to update, uh, let's say application DB. Um, so in that case, we would do some incremental up updated, updater on the application DB. Um, so um, in the current uh, GNMI solution, each uh, request is treated as a transaction um, so after every operation, whether it's insert, delete, or update, um, on error, we roll back to the previous consistent state. And once all the operations mentioned, in, I mean, all the requests are handled, and the um, configuration is updated, and we move to the next consistent state. Um, so this is a typical, uh, like a flow diagram of how a GNMI set request is handled. Um, so in Sonic, uh, only one set request is handled um, at a guinea, any given moment of time. So all the requests are queued in a, in a write queue and then there is one write thread which takes these requests 
and <coughs> updates the DB with those configuration. And on successful update, um, a response is sent back to the client. Um, this diagram is a um, workflow of how a GET request would handle. Um, so the main thing to note here is if there is a set request which is being handled, at that point if uh, a GET is received, then the data re uh, return for that GET would be from the previous checkpointed date point uh, because to avoid sending any transitional data uh, back to the client. So um, there could be multiple ways um, how the schema for the data can be uh, modeled. Um, so for config DB, we could model the data in Sonic Yang schema, um, which can then be used to uh, do validation against the defined Yang models. Or the data could be also modeled in Sonic DB schema, which is what the generic config updater is using. Uh, internally, even if the data is in Sonic DB schema, they will again be validated against the Sonic Yang model. Um, for data for AppDB, um, yeah, we will create Yang models based on the requirements of uh, what data needs to be updated, and then internally we will still leverage the Yang validation <coughs> or other specialized validation logic uh, to validate the correctness of this data. Um, so this is a typical request uh, which the Sonic uh, GNMI server would get from a, um, so on the top you could have an origin, um, origin Sonic could be either Sonic DB or Sonic Yang which tells what schema is being used and there is a target uh, which is the target DB like it could be config DB or app DB or any other DB on which this operation needs to be done. So um, there are like subtle differences between how an operation is treated when done from GNMI versus GCU. So when we when uh, G, we get a GNMI delete, so if the path is not there, uh, then we treat it as a delete. Uh, this would be similar to a JSON patch removal used by GCU. Uh, in case of update, if uh, um, there is no path value, then uh, if there is a path value specified, then it treated as a replace. If not, we uh, new entry is added to the data tree. And the corresponding operation in the JSON patch would be an add. Um, similarly for replace, um, so based on whether the value is present or not, a replace could be a delete or an update. Uh, and in the JSON patch uh, operation, it would be a remove or an add. Yeah, so with GNMI, we could also send uh, like the full configuration required for Sonic device. So in case of a delete, uh, we just send the delete message and there is no value, it just send a path which we flush out the config DB or we could, uh, it could be an update with containing the full configuration required for to operate the device. Um, what next? Um, so currently, um, I think all our code is in Python, so uh, we could look at other implementations to see if that improves high performance. Um, we could do optimizations to increase the throughput in terms of how many requests we handle. Um, so <coughs> as Sonic evolves, there are more and more applications which use like different tables and different DBs. Um, so we like we could look at support where we tag a particular table to a given application or service to know to identify who owns this table and so on. So that is the DB entry originator support. And also we could leverage uh, this GNMI service to build more microservices inside Sonic as well. And these are the references for the HLD which are already available on the GitHub website. Um, call to action, both GCU and GNMI are available in 2020 and 2020 branches respectively. Uh, we welcome more PR, review and support and looking forward to hear more integration stories and feedback as well. Thank you.
Great. Thank you, Juri. Thank you, Arvind. I think it has been very useful and for sharing your practical experience with us. Uh, do we have any questions? Hey, uh, so the GCU, uh, so if I make any change, let's say I do a replace or something, do I need to do a config reload or it, will it get dynamically updated? So this is not with config reload. This yeah. is just incremental config. Yeah. I think there are Yang models being defined in Sonic for most of the configuration needed in Sonic. So uh, I think it's still an ongoing process. Think, um, yeah, so eventually I think whatever configuration a Sonic device needs, there will be Yang model and can be pushed through GCU. So it has to conform. The configuration changes. Uh, will it take care of automatic finding out itself if it is installed and it goes automatically itself? Right, yeah. Great, thank you.